All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So in honor of WrestleMania 35 being today on Sunday, April 7th, I wanted to do a wrestling-related video, um, and I wanted to do my top 10 best pro wrestling physiques of all time. Now, we did a video maybe a couple months ago about the list that WWE had posted on their website of their top 20 greatest physiques, in their opinion. And a lot of you guys in the comment section disagreed with their picks and wanted me to do my own top 10. So this is what this video is going to be. So in this video, we're going to be looking at guys more from a bodybuilding standpoint and not so much from a just sheer massive guy like a Brock Lesnar or a Braun Strowman. Not just a big physique, but a bodybuilding physique. In terms of just overall impressiveness and completeness from a bodybuilding standpoint. So coming in at number 10. We've got a wrestler known as Chris Masters. Now, this is a guy that was wrestling when I watched wrestling as a kid. Um, his primary WWE run was from like 2005 to 2007-ish. He went under the nickname The Masterpiece, and you guys might remember his signature move when he was with the WWE being The Master Lock. Now, I think that Chris Masters was a very underrated wrestler and a very underrated character in the WWE. I think he had a very good gimmick, um, and he had a very good physique as well. I mean, in his prime, this guy was really one of the most jacked guys in the WWE. And actually, ironically enough, the reason why he left the WWE was in 2007. He had been suspended for 60 days for violating the WWE's substance abuse policy. So essentially, he failed a drug test. We're not really entirely sure what for, but... You know, the guess would be steroids. And then shortly after that suspension, he ended up being released from his WWE contract on November 8th, 2007. So I have him in my top 10. I don't even think the WWE had him in their top 20 on their website. Um, but I do think he was one of the best physiques in the history of the WWE for sure. Now, the next guy on this list is going to be kind of a controversial one. So coming in at number nine, I would pick Chris Benoit to be in my top 10. Now, clearly Chris Benoit due to what happened with him back in 2007, is basically completely erased from memory on WWE websites and the WWE Network. And of course, he was nowhere on the WWE's list of greatest physiques, and rightfully so. I mean, what happened with Chris Benoit was just horribly tragic and just a terrible situation all around. But again, he was another guy back when I watched wrestling as a kid that really stood out to me as one of the guys that kind of inspired me to start working out because not only was Chris Benoit a fantastic wrestler, very acrobatic in the ring, he'd had all kinds of very impressive moves, um, but while having that impressive move set and that impressive athletic ability, he was one of the most jacked guys in the WWE. Now again, I can definitely understand why the WWE would want to kind of move on from Chris Benoit and kind of bury you know, any memories of him, but at the same time, his athletic ability, his physique, and his performances in the ring, I think, are something that really shouldn't be forgotten, despite what he did afterwards, or despite the horrible things that he did in his personal life. As a wrestler alone, personal life aside and, you know, the tragedy aside, he was a legendary, historic wrestler. Now, coming in the number seven spot, we have a 70s and 80s era wrestler known as Tony Atlas. Now, Tony Atlas was a very impressive guy all around, not just in wrestling, but he was a bodybuilder, a power lifter, professional wrestler. He had won the bodybuilding title Mr. USA three times. And in terms of impressive bodybuilding physiques, I look at Tony Atlas as a very classic bodybuilding physique, a very old school, golden era reminiscent physique. And I think he was very impressive in that regard because he had these crazy wide lats, these crazy big arms, uh, but at the same time, he had that classic trademark 70s, insanely small waist, insane V taper, and just overall a very aesthetic physique. This wasn't a guy that was just some big, you know, muscle mass monster. But he was a guy that had a very refined, very polished, and very aesthetic physique. I think when people think of top WWE physiques of all time, they're thinking of these big, brutal, you know, muscular guys like Ryback, or again, a guy like Brock Lesnar. But from a bodybuilding standpoint, I would pick a guy like Tony Atlas over those guys any day of the week. Now, coming in at number seven, I have another guy who was really big when I was a kid, and that is Bobby Lashley. So Bobby Lashley started his WWE run in 2005, where he was well known for his reign over at ECW from 2006 to 2007. That's where he really made a name for himself. Then he would leave the WWE in 2008 and end up going on to TNA, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, around 2009. Now, currently, Bobby Lashley is back with the WWE, and he's doing very well, and he's getting a very good push. 
And just as an overall athlete is probably one of the highest caliber athletes in the WWE, but from a physique standpoint, at the age of 42 years old, in the WWE today, I still think he has one of the best physiques, even against all these guys that are two decades younger than him. He's been able to maintain pretty much the same physique for like the past 20 years. And I think that's impressive in and of itself. And I think really in terms of overall just freak genetics and just a guy that looks like a bodybuilder but is able to perform like a wrestler, Bobby Lashley is certainly in my top 10 in a solid seventh place. Now, coming in the number six spot, you either love him or you hate him, John Cena. Now, I have John Cena in my top 10 for the same reason that I have Bobby Lashley in my top 10. Just for the fact that, number one, he's got an incredible physique. That's very evident. He's got ridiculous vascularity. He's always shredded. Um, but again, he's 41 years old, and he came into the WWE back in the early 2000s. So he's been in this game for, again, two decades. And he's been able to maintain that superhero-like physique um, for the past two decades. And at 41 years old, doesn't even really show any signs of slowing down. And I think that's very impressive, and I think that's worthy of a spot on the top 10. Now, coming into the top five here, at number five, I have the Ultimate Warrior, a.k.a. James Helwig. Rest in peace. Unfortunately, he passed away back in 2014. But I think from his era, the mid to late 80s, the early 90s, he was one of the most iconic physiques in the WWE. He came out with the crazy face paint. He had the bicep bands on. Super vascular guy. He was a bodybuilder before he was a wrestler. Um, and overall, he was just one of those guys that was a freak. And he was known for being a freak. And having a crazy physique really made his character and completed that gimmick. And I think without that physique, the Ultimate Warrior gimmick wouldn't have been as successful. You know, this maniac that's super ripped, comes in with face paint. I think that's really what made the gimmick. If we had a guy that was fat or skinny, I don't think that gimmick would have worked with a different physique other than the physique that Warrior had. And just looking back at some of the photos of him, I mean, they're just iconic wrestling photos. Now, coming in my number four spot, I have a guy that's from the same era as the Ultimate Warrior, and that is Ravishing Rick Rude. He's known as being one of the most aesthetic guys in the history of the WWE, and probably the only wrestler that I know of that would, his signature pose would be an abs and thighs pose, which is a traditional bodybuilding pose. So this was another guy whose gimmick was really dependent on his physique. I mean, he really relied on having to be ripped um, and have these crazy abs when he would come on and compete uh, because he would do those signature abs and thighs poses, and it was really dependent on him you know, coming in ripped. And I think that's another characteristic that makes these guys in my top 10 is the fact that their gimmicks were dependent on them having these impressive physiques. And Rick Rude was just a wrestling icon, man. I mean, everyone wanted to be like Rick Rude. His whole gimmick was, you know, he's muscular and he gets all the women. And everyone wanted to be Rick Rude back in the day. So I think he certainly deserves a spot on the top 10 here. And actually, I think they had him at number one on the WWE's list of their top 20. Now, coming in the number three spot, you guys know I had to include Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner. Now, Scott Steiner really didn't have the prettiest physique. In fact, he kind of had a gnarly ugly, just really dense muscular physique. But Scott Steiner was called Freakzilla for a reason. That was his nickname for a good reason. And that reason was that no one had ever really seen a physique like Scott Steiner's in professional wrestling before. Again, it wasn't the prettiest physique, but he was just a freak. I mean, he would come out ready to wrestle with veins just busting out all over his body. Of course, he had probably the weirdest and freakiest looking arms and biceps in the history of wrestling. And I think Scott's just a guy that if you watched wrestling during the era of Scott Steiner, it's just a guy whose physique you can never forget because it was so unique and so original and just, you know, something we had never seen before. And again, this is another guy that built his whole, his whole reputation and his whole gimmick off the fact that he had this, you know, ridiculous physique. Now, coming in the number two spot, I have Batista, the animal. Now, this was another guy that was a big wrestler when I was a kid, and he was one of the guys I remember watching wrestling, you know, before I was ever into working out and just thinking, man, that guy is just, he's a monster. I remember sitting there watching SmackDown and thinking, this is, this is the most muscular dude I've ever seen in my life, and it really, really fit his gimmick. He kind of had like an Ultimate Warrior gimmick where he was like this rabid animal going crazy in the ring, you know, flexing and having this insane physique, and that's what really made the character great was the fact that he was kind of a wild man in the ring, but he was he was just a monster. And of course, you have Batista wrestling this weekend, tonight actually, in WrestleMania 35, wrestling Triple H. So you know I had to include him in my top 10 list. Now, coming in my number one spot, 
my pick for the number one greatest and most iconic wrestling physique of all time is superstar Billy Graham, wrestling from 1969 to 1989. In my opinion, Billy Graham was like the Arnold Schwarzenegger of professional wrestling. He was a competitive bodybuilder in the 60s and 70s during that golden era of bodybuilding, and he had a very golden era physique, very similar to Arnold Schwarzenegger's. He was a very tall guy and a very big guy weighing 300 plus pounds while still being in bodybuilding shape. And he had probably some of the biggest arms ever in professional wrestling at 22 inches. You know, most current pros today are in the 23 to 24 inch range, and this was back in the 70s. He was also a competitive powerlifter, bench pressing 600 plus pounds at one point. He trained at Gold's Gym Venice with Arnold and Franco. Arnold was his training partner for a period of time. There's a lot of photos um, where Billy Graham is actually out angling the hell out of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Billy Graham's gimmick was also the inspiration for Scott Steiner's gimmick and also Hulk Hogan's gimmick as well. So he kind of paved the way for these super muscular guys to have these gimmicks. And back in the 70s when he was wrestling, there was nobody even close to his physique. I mean, no one was touching this guy. From a physique standpoint, he was on a whole nother planet. I mean, back in the late 60s, early 70s, this is when a lot of wrestlers were still just, you know, as big as possible, just kind of big, fat, hairy guys um, wrestling. And he was one of the first guys that was really just all around bodybuilder slash wrestler. And I think he really forever changed the game of professional wrestling. So let me know what you guys thought of this top 10 list. Who would you add? Who would you subtract? Do you think this is better than the WWE's top 20 list? Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed already. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.